building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 19, making the tooth belt drive to gear up the generator. And to start off this episode, by way of a change, I'm just going to show some common workshop tools. Starting with hammers, this is a replica 13th century war hammer, and it's really nasty, but it's ideal just in case you get any barbarian hordes trying to invade your workshop. This, on the other hand, is a much more modern device. This is a hide and copper faced hammer. This one is a very old one, I've had it for years, and it's just got nylon ends on each end and a nylon handle. And now a new one. This one has a rubber face on one end and a nylon face on the other. And I bought this yesterday when I went to the bearing supplier, where I bought the bearings and the tooth belt drive components for the drive to the generator on the steam plant. The good thing about most of these hammers, with the exception of the war hammer, is that the ends are replaceable, because after hitting things over a long period of time, the soft ends of the hammers get mashed up. Unlike with the war hammer, which just mashes everything up that you hit with it, therefore doing maximum damage. The company I went to is called Spen Bearings, and I go there from time to time to buy bearings, because that's largely what they do. But they also sell this stuff which is called Bond Lock, an alternative to Loctite. I'll try it out and see how it goes and report back later. I didn't go to spend bearings just to buy hammers and Loctite substitutes. I went to buy this tooth belt drive system, comprising of two pulleys and a tooth belt. And as you can see, one pulley is larger than the other because I'm going to gear up the dynamo. And the really useful thing about these pulleys is that there isn't a hole drilled through the middle. They just have piloted holes as a guide. So in the larger of the two pulleys, I will be drilling and reaming a hole a quarter of an inch in diameter, and in the smaller of the two pulleys, I will be doing the same to make it fit on the motor shaft, which is five millimetres in diameter. While I was there, I also bought a spare tooth belt, because the tooth belt and my Sealy belt sander breaks all the time. So starting with the larger of the two pulleys, I'm going to have to turn down the outer rim, because the overall diameter of the rim of the pulley is slightly more than I need. So the first thing to do is put the pulley into the three-jaw chuck in my small Boxford lathe, and it looks like it's spinning all over the place, but it's not. The hole in the centre was lined up to be accurate. And here, using one imperial size less than one quarter of an inch, I'm drilling a hole through the middle. These pulleys are cast items, and they're made from aluminium, and aluminium can be difficult to drill and machine because aluminium, generally speaking, grabs and can pick up metal quite easily. This is the back gear lever on the lathe, and I've moved it into the low speed position, because now I'm going to ream the hole in the piece of aluminium, and it's better to ream holes at a slow speed. And to make sure that I get a good finish down the centre hole of the aluminium pulley, in this clip I'm applying some lubricant with a brush. This is white spirit, not paraffin. I don't have any paraffin. A short while back, when I mentioned white spirit on a video, I was inundated with messages asking me what white spirit was. The internet is a marvellous thing, and there's something on there called Google, and if you type words like white spirit into Google, you will get the answer. Alternatively, you can write into me and use my brain, I really don't mind. On my mobile phone is an application built into the phone, and it's called Siri. So I'm now going to press the button on the phone and ask Siri what is white spirit. And Siri says, Here is what I found. And tells you what it is. Right, back to the job. What I'm doing at the moment is just checking the fits of the shaft into the bearings in the piece of wood, and the fact that the pulley fits on the shaft OK, and here is the general arrangement. It's easy to see when I put the pulley on the motor as well. As you can see clearly in this clip, I turn the larger pulley, and the smaller pulley goes faster. And the drive is approximately 2 to 1. And now it's time to drill the pulleys to accept grub screws to lock them to the respective shafts. Normally I would just find the centre of the pulley by eye. But seeing as I've just bought this, this is a wiggler or wobbler. And they're really useful for accurately finding the centre between two points. And even though the accuracy of my drilling machine's chuck is questionable, it still seems to work. All you have to do is fit the shaft of the wiggler or wobbler into the chuck. And then move the position of the shaft to touch one side of the machine vice jaws. Then rotate the chuck and see where the position of the pointer is at the other side. The shaft of the wiggler fits into the main housing and it's on like a ball joint, so you can move it around with ease, but it stays where you put it. It's a very simple, almost primitive device, but it seems to work. Normally I would sort of do this, just sight the drill over the hole, 
But now, thanks to this gadget that I bought recently, I don't have to do that, and I can be confident that the centre drill is exactly in the centre between the two faces of the chuck jaws. With confidence, I can drill the hole in the pulley, first of all with the centre drill, followed by a twist drill, which will be one eighth of an inch in diameter, tapping size for 4BA, and what this means is the finished groove screw that goes into this thread will clamp the shaft exactly on the centre line of the shaft. Quite simple really. This is but one of the functions of a wiggler or wobbler, and I'll be showing other applications in future videos. Currently in this clip I'm drilling the one eighth of an inch diameter hole, and now I'm drilling the other pulley. There's a slight difference with this one though. Once I've drilled through one side of the pulley, I'm drilling through the other side as well from the inside. And once I've threaded this 6BA, because it's a much smaller pulley, I can put a 6BA grub screw in each side. This clip shows me fitting the smaller of the two tooth belt pulleys to the motor shaft. And with everything held loosely in position, this is the general idea. As I turn the lay shaft, the motor goes much faster than the speed I'm turning the lay shaft. And bear in mind that there's going to be a pulley on the end of the lay shaft that is driven from the steam engine. While I was at spin bearings, I bought some other things as well. I bought an adjustable spanner, and I'm really sorry it's not a barco. It looked good did this, and I thought I'll give it a try and see what it's like. It seems very well made. It's made by a company called Teng Tools. Spen bearings had a lot of Teng Tools in stock, and while I was there, the Teng Tools rep was in, and he gave me this as a free gift. Just what you want in the workshop. A Teng Tools bottle opener. A good quality bottle opener too. Originally he offered me a cream cake because he'd brought a load of cream cakes in with him but I had to decline his offer for those because I didn't want to go into a diabetic coma and as I don't currently have any bottles of beer in the workshop I thought it would be a good time to paint the inside of the lower box. I'm using some hammerite pot black paint for this which is very good paint. I'll just take this opportunity to publish a quick health and safety warning that I do not recommend opening bottles of beer in the workshop I cannot recommend this because you might spill it. It's nearly time to put the whole thing together. These are the boiler mounts that have been painted, ready to fit to the baseboard. That's it for now though, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.